Okay, so this, uh, I'll read a little blurb here that Doug wrote. So uh, in this session, we're going to delve into the basics of utilizing the open build service and the OSC command line tool uh, using a practical example of a version bump. Uh, it's for, this is a really high level, easy thing to do. Uh, we often get questions from users all over the place. You know, Upstream has released a new version. When is Tumbleweed going to get it? Well, oftentimes for a lot of packages, it's really a simple process. Um, and I'm just going to walk you through the basics of how to do it. Uh, basically starting from a very uh, high level area here. So <clears throat> we got, uh, as you can see, you got a Firefox window open here. Uh, actually, let me... If you're not presently logged into it as build.opensusa.org, it'll bring you to this page. Um, I'm signing another tab, so it automatically did it. But for somebody that's never done this before, you're going to get this page. Uh, you would sign up right here. It's really easy to sign up. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And this case, I actually set myself up a couple of packages just for the sake of having something to show you guys. And I went to the wrong one. So I've got these two packages that uh, are going to be relatively easy to... Uh, to show you guys an update on. Um, this part of what I'm doing, a lot of you aren't. I'm on a micro OS based desktop, so I have to do this in a container. Uh, if you're on Leap or Tumbleweed, this is not necessary. Okay, so that gets you starting at the uh, command line. Uh, OSC is the tool that we use to interact from the command line with OBS. Um, so what you're going to do is whatever package it is that you want to do, you would find, uh, you could search here, you can search in OBS, um, OSC search. Uh, if I wanted to look up libLXQT, obviously I've never used OSC before, so it's going to ask you to log in. Uh, let me get that password. And this can be set up, obviously, in a couple of different ways. Uh, I do have the Python 3 keyring installed, so you can store your passwords wherever. That would tell you everywhere that lib LXQT is packaged. Uh, obviously, X11 LXQT is the main DVL. And that's where you would send your packages to uh, in a normal situation. Uh, I have the special example repo set up. So what you're going to do at this point is you know Upstream has released an update. Uh, because if you do a... Uh, and I actually did that wrong. You can always check using your standard zipper tools. Uh, Tumbleweed is currently shipping 1.4. Uh, Leap is actually shipping 1.2 in the 15.5 images. So that's actually what I'm going to be doing here is an update from what Leap is currently shipping to what Tumbleweed is currently shipping. So the uh, easy way to do this is OSC BCO, which is branch and then check out. In this case, since I have the special repo set up,
And what this is going to do is it's going to, uh, through the API with the uh, open build service, it's going to branch into your home repository, which is set up when you do your sign in up here. Uh, right there. So uh, there is now a branch project on OBS for LXQT build tools. What BCO does as well is it pulls it down onto your machine. So and as you can see, the, the package I've got set up, it's uh the dot 12 build. And oftentimes the easiest way to find out. spec and you can get your url typically from the spec file as to where the upstream sources are coming from Do, 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 do. So we're dealing with the LXQT build tools. This is a really pretty quick package. Uh, part of the reason I picked it is because it does build so quickly. And this one has a little different versioning than the main part of LXQT it's versioning you'll figure it out so the latest release is dot 13 obviously we're shipping dot 12. so all you really have to do is i'm in my working directory and you can just do wget use wget or curl or any method for getting the tarball in this case uh, for projects that release tarballs And because we do have it set up for this one, we do grab the signature as well because the upstream hand helpfully provides Okay, so if we check OSC status It doesn't know what to do with these So So that gets everything in there. Let's OSC know it's there. OSC is similar to using Git. Um, it's not identical by any stretch of the imagination. And just to be clear, this is how I do it. There's about a thousand ways this can be done. Uh, I know some people do it through the web interface. I don't. So I, if you're looking for the pointy clicky way to do this, uh, I've never done an update through the web interface. So the next thing you're going to want to do is run your spec file. Update your version. And due to the way uh, this has been packaged, these are all done through the macros. You don't have to go in and change the version in a bunch of places. It's all going to pick up from this line through the uh, the version macros. Uh, if you are doing this on Leap or Tumbleweed, oftentimes all you need to do is uh, that. Uh, because my build system's a little little different, I have to do KVM build, so I have an alias set up. And let's just see what happens. Obviously, uh, it's going to be pulling from the repos for the local build, so it's going to check your things just like it would if you were adding a zipper repo uh, uh, 
in your standard environment. And it takes just a second. Uh, and actually, the first time you run this, uh, as we can see, the the patch command in my spec file is uh, not working anymore. Uh, we've had an update in the build system since this was packaged. So, And this is actually a new one I wasn't expecting. You know what? And we are actually going to just fix this. Uh, you, this is actually the proper way to do this now. As I was saying earlier, this uh, I look smaller than 13 bytes. What in the heck is going on here? Hey, I'm not as prepared as I thought I was. All right. All right, so I am going to come back over here. Just find out if I have a problem there. Yep, so curl hosed me there. Probably because I don't know what I'm doing. It happens. Typo. All right, now we should have a tarball that actually does something. As I said before, I, the first time you pull one of these down, uh, pulling all of the uh, dependencies down to set up your build environment. On subsequent builds, uh, you don't necessarily have to pull all of the sources down and they go much faster. Uh, okay, so, and I knew this was going to happen. Uh, the patch that is currently included for uh, 0.12 is no longer needed, uh, which right there tells you the patch won't apply. That's really easy to fix. Quite literally, just don't need the patch anymore. Get rid of it. Okay, so this one built, uh, as you can see right here, it created a RPM. Uh, everything went good. Uh, there, 
the RPM lint checks will give you, uh, this one has a potential bashism issue. Um, you can fix that, submit patches back upstream. Uh, these, I don't like to see them, uh, but it's a little bit beyond the scope of this particular little workshop, so I'm not going to deal with it. But that tells me that my package built all right. Uh, and what I would do at this point is to update my changes, which is OSC VC. Um, I don't actually know what VC stands for. I just know that's the command for doing it. Which is going to populate with your current date, uh, whatever you've set up uh, in OBS as your user uh, username and email address is going to populate. Uh, and for instance, I removed a file, uh, not every project likes things formatted the same way. Uh, you're kind of going to have to look at previous entries, uh, because for instance, if you don't call out that you removed a patch file uh, in the case of anything that's going into factory. Uh, it will get rejected and you'll have to fix it. Uh, this is actually the format I like to use. I'm, a, I'm an LXQT maintainer, so I've been uh, trying to standardize on how I do these. Uh, Thirteen. Tell them what you're doing, why you're doing it, uh, and then look at whatever changes Upstream has published. Uh, you know, if you want to do it the lazy way, uh, actually, I did that incorrectly. So now that my change log has been populated. Yeah, no. So at this point, we don't no longer need the dot twelve files. Uh, so you can just do OSC remove. Okay, so this is pretty obvious to read. Uh, the changes we've committed locally so far, we are going to delete the dot 12 files. We're adding the dot 13 files and we've got modifications and changes and spec. So what I'm going to do at this point is OSCCI, which is check in. And that's going to check in all of my local changes to this project right here. which if we go back over to the web interface, you see they're building. Uh, and this is where usually I would do my testing uh, to make sure everything is kosher before I submit it up to the DVL. Uh, you can use, you can treat this like any other uh, repo. Uh, as far as zipper is concerned for whatever environment you're testing in, uh, assuming I set this up properly. Okay. So, you, okay. So I have it set not to publish, uh, when this does build. Okay. Built for 586. This one I actually don't know how to do uh, because I don't normally do it that way. Uh, I typically enable the publishing for my builds 
And in whatever environment you're doing your testing in, you can now treat this like any other uh, repository that you would normally use a zipper, which is, you know, your basic. And then you would install you whatever it is you were just working on, just like that. Uh, once you've verified that everything's good, that you're okay with sending it upstream, uh, you would then go back into here. Uh, this can also be done through the web interface. So what you're going to do is an OSC. SR, which is submit request. Basically, as long as you've done your changes file, uh, you're, you've, you've updated your changes file, right? You don't really have to do anything here unless maybe you want to make some notes for the uh, upstream maintainers. So it has now created this request ID, which if you come back over here and look at requests, you can see that I have submitted this request back upstream. What the maintainer is going to see is a screen that looks just like this. They'll get an email. Uh, they're going to have a look at it and say, you know, if there's an issue that they want you to deal with, you know, comment here, uh, please fix formatting in change log. Let's see documentation. <clears throat> uh, you'll get something like that back. Uh, one thing I do caution is getting comments, uh, and sometimes they will even do, uh, depending on which project you're working with, uh, the maintainer of the project will... That's what I was, sorry, clicking in the wrong place. Uh, this is a little off because of the way I've done this. Uh, they will have the uh, a reject or an accept here. Uh, because I'm the one that submitted it, I have a revoke. Uh, if a uh, maintainer decides to reject your request, uh, they almost always give you a reason for it. Uh, don't take it personally. Um, just uh, try and deal with <clears throat> whatever you might get. Um, I can actually show you a couple that I've got sitting here, which are actually from the automated stuff. Uh, this is for getting 1.4 into Leap. So. Oftentimes, it's just uh, it's just a they reject it. You go in, you make whatever changes they need you to, and you just do OSCSR again, and it'll up update it with the changes, and the maintainers will either approve or reject it. Uh, sometimes uh, this one's a very simple example. I mean, if you're dealing with something like the kernel or Firefox or some of the desktop environment stuff, they're big, they're complicated, they link to lots of libraries. Uh, the version bump might not be as simple as just a version bump. Uh, so that's sort of the easy uh, rundown on that right now. <clears throat> so as I was saying, I am the maintainer for the purposes of this example. So I know what I know this will work. Uh, so I would say something like LGTM. 
looks good to me as the maintainer, accept request. And you will get an email saying, hey, we accepted your request. Uh, this will then get forwarded from the DEVEL project to factory. It'll go through open QA if it's set up to do it, and it'll be in a tumbleweed snapshot in the next day or two. Uh, this does not cover leap. That's an entirely different thing that uh, can be addressed in a later uh, workshop by somebody else. <clears throat> I do want to say this set, this example is based on a simple tarball where you go upstream, you grab a tarball. Uh, we have other projects that are using the new OBS, uh, SCM setup. Um, there it is, uh, which is, um, uses a service file. It's pulling direct from a Git repo somewhere. Uh, it's creating the, the tarball for you from Git. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this workshop, uh, but I am going to work on putting one together, uh, detailing that um, functionality in a, another workshop later on. Uh, it's just, didn't want to have that. This one's already gone longer than I wanted it to. Um, so just wanted to make sure that I made everybody aware that this is not the only way to get sources into, into OBS. So that, covers a pretty basic uh, version bump. Uh, if you are a user that, as I said, finds out, hey, upstream on software I use has released a new version. What's going on with the old version in Tumbleweed? Uh, it is a lot easier to get attention and get things updated uh, if you're willing to take the time to do this sort of thing. <clears throat> And once you've done it a few times, and I'm a little slower on this because I'm trying to talk and uh, and do this at the same time. Uh, when I'm able to focus on it directly, this was a would be a five minute update. It does not take long. We have questions on YouTube. So OBS in a container, I do not know. Um, we do offer a distro box container, uh, which is. Uh, so if you have DistroBox installed, uh, that would be this image right here. Uh, the only thing I will say is this image as it exists um, does not include the QEMU uh, stuff that you need to do KVM builds. Um, and you cannot do a, 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 a CH root build in a container as it currently exists. Um, but yes, that, that, that is available as far as, as this part of things, uh, OBS itself in a container. I have no idea.